Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Class of 23 Arena at the campus of the University of Pennsylvania, where tonight on Hockey Night, the Lehigh Mountain Hawks skate into town to take on the hosts, the Dragons of Drexel University. And here alongside Brian Augsburger, I'm Michael Augsburger, SBR Brothers. It's great to have you along with us tonight on Hockey Night on the PTI Radio Network. The Mountain Hawks come in on a loss. They lost 5-2 to two earlier this weekend. Drexel is coming off a 4-3 to three overtime win. And, Brian, we saw Lehigh play Westchester last weekend. Their leading scorer, Chris Remondelli, looked very menacing. He did, and I think the uh, keys to the game as we get started with the national anthem here, uh, I think Lehigh needs to get McGee, Brooks, Ramondelli on the ice as much as possible. Um, they do most of the damage for for Lehigh, uh, but the most vital key, and we're going to the uh, to the national anthem here. So let's. And the most vital key to the game, uh, I think, is production from the other lines. Um, we don't see much from uh, this, the second, third, or more, really this third and the fourth line from Lehigh. Um, we saw against Westchester, we saw six goals from Lehigh, and only one of which uh, was scored from the other line, so, uh, other than the McGee, Brooks, and Ramadelli line. So uh, we need to see a lot of production out of them. Drexel, on the other hand, they're coming off the overtime victory. They have done well this season. They're eight and four on the year. These two conference foes are, are playing each other for the second time. Brian, what do you think about Drexel tonight here at home? Well, I think it's a big advantage them being at home uh, on home ice. But I think the the biggest key to the game for Drexel would be to get Williams involved in the game early. I think um, he he's really hot right now. He had a hat trick last night, including the game winner. So uh, we'll look to see a lot from Williams. And when we come back, we'll drop the first puck as we announce the starting lineups and listen to the national anthem here at the Class of 1923 Arena at Pennsylvania. Lehigh against Drexel when we come back. Lehigh against Drexel in Philadelphia. Welcome back, everyone, on the PTI Network. Brian Augsburger will be with us in just a moment. I'm Michael Augsburger to talk to you through the live action. The starters for the Mountain Hawks tonight, Calvaruso, Goldstein, Levine, Ramondelli, who scored a hat-trick last weekend against Westchester, and Warren in goal is Mr. Carlin. And Carlin has done well for the Mountain Hawks all year. He's played in all but one game so far for Lehigh. Drexel tonight. Meyer gets the start along with Kenosian. Desitel, Benedus, who scored last weekend. And Cam Neely. Gravenstein is in the net for the Dragons. Drexel skates from right to left here at Penn's Class of 1923 rink. They wear the gold jerseys with the blue trim, navy blue, and the navy pants. Lehigh with the brown road jerseys with gold and white trim. And Lehigh written across the front in arch lettering. They skate from left to right with the white helmets tonight. Drexel with a win last Knight, Lehigh with the loss, and Drexel wins the draw here. It's back to Meyer on the near side, who passes it in for Neely. He will give chase to it behind the net. Neely gets to it first. He centers it to Benedus, but it's broken up by Lehigh. They try to get it out to the point. It's stopped at the blue line by Meyer and sent right in on Carlin, who gloves it and forces the face off to his left with 19.44 left to go in the first period. Carlin watches it drawn to his right. Face-off won by Calvaruso. Still first lines out there for both teams. Chris Ramondelli, dangerous player, passes up ahead to Goldstein. Goldstein, two-on-one, takes the shot, saved by Gravenstein, and he pokes it away with his stick as it was loose in the crease. Drexel with a four-on-two, but they dump it in as there was a good back check there from the defense of Warren. Out in front in the slot, and then... Chris Remondelli picks up the loose puck. He skates ahead across the blue line and is checked by Churchvara for Drexel. They get it back here for Cam Neely at his own blue line. He crosses center and then into the Lehigh zone. Drops off for Newton to take a shot. And his shot from the slot is gloved easily by Carlin. 19 2 
left in the first period. Drexel with the first shot on goal of the evening. The faceoff, McGee for Lehigh. Will lose the draw, and Drexel will get it here in the slot. Wide open shot there, save made from Carlin on the shoulder. The rebound goes to the corner, and then skating to get it down in the near corner. Shagan tries the pass, it's intercepted. We have a penalty coming up. It's on Lehigh, and they touch up as Church Vara tried to skate into the slot against two defenders. We were here a couple of weeks ago in Philadelphia. Hooking is the call, and the quirk of this stadium is that the benches are on the opposite sides of the rink. So Lehigh is across from us. Drexel is just beneath us, and their penalty boxes are on opposite sides as well of the Lehigh bench. So for the Mountain Hawks, Brooks will spend two minutes for hooking. Face off, far side circle inside the Lehigh zone. One by Drexel, they get it to the point. Here's Williams, he shoots, save, and then juggled and held by Carlin for his second save of the night. 18.35 left to go in the first period. Another quick draw. McGee loses out to Drexel and it's back to the point for Williams. A one-timer comes in, saved by Carlin. He had Carroll in front of him to screen him. He directed it to the far side corner. Here's Carroll in that corner. Passes it here near side. Hagen and now Church Vara skates along the blue line. Skates to the circle. He shoots. Carroll's there in front and he pokes at it. But Carlin's able to cover. 18-12 left in the first. And still Drexel has had the play mostly in Lehigh's zone. But they haven't been able to beat Carlin on four shots. 129 left in the penalty to Brooks. Face off in the Lehigh zone, won by the Mountain Hawks. They dump it, but it's still in the corner as Williams keeps it in the zone. Williams now looking for a centering pass in the corner. It's poked away from him, and then Carroll gets to it. Lehigh still can't clear the zone. Church Vara thinks about the shot and said passes, and then a long pass ahead here through the slot to Williams. Inside for Carroll. And now Carroll's got it in the corner, but Lehigh just sends it high off the glass, and it's cleared all the way down as it goes over the stick. It bounces over the stick of Church Vara. Gravenstein has to stop it at his net with 52 seconds to play in the first period. Here's Church Vara skating up the left side, across the red line, gains the zone momentarily, but it's shoveled out of the zone, and then hustling back to get it is Meyer. Meyer skates behind Gravenstein as Drexel makes the change, and so does Lehigh. Five on four as Meyer skates up ice. His pass ahead for Benedus goes over under his stick. Icing's waved off. Meyer keeps it in the zone as Lehigh tried to clear it, and then Lehigh finally gets it across the blue line. Meyer picks it up. He stops at the red line, passes up ahead for Benedus, who gains the zone, but it's off his backhand stick, and Lehigh just throws it out of the zone. It's Joseph Ramondelli with the clearance. Here's Meyer now, near side playing with his fellow defenseman, McGee following him closely. And now, skating in the zone, here's Rodriguez. He shoots. Shoulder save made by Carlin. Rebound picked up by Steven Villa. Back out to the point. Shot. Save. It's blocked in front by a couple of Lehigh players. In the corner, they try to center it. It goes through the crease. It bounces. No one's able to get a stick on it. It comes back out to the point. Sent back in. And now on the near side, circle. Lehigh finally clears. And that's the end of the penalty. Drexel spent most of the time in the Lehigh zone, but they weren't able to get a great scoring chance. And they ship it into the Lehigh zone for icing. Well, so far we've already seen Carlin had to do a lot of work today, uh, or in, in the four minutes that we've played so far. We haven't seen Gravenstein even touch the puck. Uh, he did He did touch the puck once. Um, and, and we've seen this a lot. We saw this against Westchester. Gravenstein didn't really touch it much and Carlin with a lot of touches. 16.07 left to go, face off in the Drexel zone. Gravenstein watches his Dragons win the puck, but it's in the corner now, they weren't able to clear it. Near side corner it comes. It's off the backhand of Carson Newton. And then shipped all the way across the ice. Skating up the ice, here is Shagan. Shagan makes a move at the circle, he tries to split two defenders, and it goes through everyone, all the way to Carlin who pounces on it and gets the face off. 
15-44 left to play in this first period. Six shots on goal for Drexel. Only one for the Mountain Hawks. Face off one by Lehigh, but they can't clear it out of the zone. It's kept in well by Luke Mazur. Shagan overskated it behind the goal. And so Lehigh is able to get it out. Chris Remondelli with a good pass ahead for Calvaruso. Calvaruso is hit by Mazur in the corner. And now Ramondelli behind the goal. Gets the loose puck, skates to the far corner. And now on the backhand, tries to pass into the slot. It goes a little too far for Calvaruso. And now Drexel with it the other way. Here's Ferreira. Gains the zone, but Shagan was offside. Well, we're already seeing uh, Drexel take the example of Westchester in the last two periods of last week's game. Um, just not not letting uh, Ramondelli get a free look at any passes and any any shots. Lehigh wins the draw, just outside their zone. 15 minutes to play in the first. Drexel breaking out, but they cough up the puck at their blue line. It's sent in behind Gravenstein. Drexel tries to get it into the near corner now. Here's Michalik. Michalik passes up ahead. It's intercepted in the slot. It goes through the stick of Gravenstein, who tried to stop it in front of his crease. Picked up there by Churchvara. He skates into the near corner of his own zone. Passes back to Michalik. Skates to the far corner. Backhands it off the boards. Here for Churchvara. His pass is broken up, and Lehigh sends it all the way in. They make a change as Gravenstein stops it behind his goal. And now skating up here the left side. Broken up there by Lehigh on the far side. They pass it into the neutral zone. And now it's back here for Levine in his own far corner. Wraps it around the near side corner. And they can't get it out of the zone. Drexel keeps it in. Wraps it around near to far. Centering pass from Hagen, intercepted by McGee. And now he skates up ice. He's working on two defenders. Skates across the blue line. Drops it off for Brooks. Brooks takes the shot. Doesn't get through anyone. Pass through. The slot. And it's McGee who whipped on the shot and skates it down in the far corner. The shot comes in. Lehigh finally with some pressure. Carroll blocks the shot. And now Drexel going the other way. Good move by Williams. Williams gets it in on goal, but it goes behind Carlin. And now Drexel tries to wrap it around. They can't do it. Hagen with the pass through the slot for Carroll, but it's broken up by Lehigh and sent all the way down. Icing is waved off. Here's Meyer behind his goal. 13-16 to play. Still no score in the first period. Drexel with a delayed offside. Just has to dump it in. Here's Benedus at the circles. Now in the slot. Shot saved by the pad of Carlin. In the corner it goes. Here's Cam Neely. He centers. Goes through everyone. Meyer in the slot. Takes the shot. Blocked well. It was Goldstein on the block. And now here's Chris Remondelli. He's got Goldstein in the middle. Remondelli is taken down. No penalty called. And Drexel is able to clear the zone. Back to Remondelli far side. He skates in with his left hand. Gets it on goal. He takes the shot. He scores! Chris Remondelli skated with a beeline from the corner. And then he switched to the backhand as he skated across the left side of the goal, put it in on the right side low, and it's one nothing Lehigh. Well, surprise, surprise, it's Ramondelli, and we we haven't seen Lehigh do anything so far, uh, much like we talked about in the pregame and much like we talked about in the Westchester game. He, they haven't done anything, and Ramondelli gets on the ice, and it's one nothing. Ramondelli scores again, 12.30 to play in the first period. Drexel's had seven shots against Lehigh's two, but Ramondelli's goal makes it one nothing Lehigh as Drexel ices the puck. And it really is a shame, too, because we've seen Drexel take Ramondelli out of the game a bit uh, in big hits and um, uh, stick, stick poking. So uh, it's a shame that they've, uh, they came up with that. Face off, far corner. One by Lehigh, but then they cough the puck up. And Drexel's got it here on the near side. They skate up ice with it and send it into the Lehigh zone. A high stick is called, and it's just tipping the puck with the high stick. So we'll have a face-off coming up in the neutral zone. No, it'll come down into the Drexel zone with 12.09 to play in the first period.
Ramondelli will take the face off for Lehigh and win it easily. They get it to the point. Leach with a shot. It's deflected in front over the bar with Brooks. And now Ramondelli in the corner. Near side. Takes the centering pass. And the shot from McGee never makes it to goal. Ramondelli passes to the far point. And the shot comes in. Save made by Gravenstein. And then some players are trading some pleasantries in front of the goal. The shot came from Warren on the far side point. 11.50 to play. Lehigh is finally getting some pressure on Gravenstein. The score is 1-0. Mountain Hawks. Ramondelli again wins the draw for Lehigh at the far circle of the Drexel zone. The shot is deflected in front and then it goes over the stick of Leach at the blue line and Warren tried to gain the zone just a fraction early. And offside is the call. It only wipes off a few seconds. 11.41 to play in the first period. one nothing Lehigh. McGee takes the draw against Stephen Villa, and Villa wins it for Drexel. They get it to Michalik on the near side. He backhands it into the zone. It goes through the legs of McGee into the slot, but then all the way down. This will be icing on Lehigh as Remondelli was giving chase against Church Vara. And Church Vara had a step on him. They have had some audio problems here at the Class of 1923 Arena so far tonight. They haven't had any music between stoppages and play. The shot comes in from the slot. The rebound's loose in front. And Carlin made the initial save. They still keep it in the zone. Now here's Ryan Williams. He passes it to the corner. And then Carlin watches that bounce on off the side netting and in front of him. And he jumps on it for the faceoff. 11.09 left. Lehigh leads 1-0. We've seen some juicy rebounds from Carlin so far. And that's so far it hasn't hurt them. But we saw that a lot against Westchester. And that's a reason why they scored. Westchester scored seven or uh, four goals. Six goals, sorry. Ryan Williams with it. He passes to the far corner, and the one-timer goes over the bar harmlessly. It comes to the near corner, and then they wrap it around on the far side. Here's Homan against Hagen. Homan gets it to the near corner for his fellow defenseman to play. Meyer keeps it in the zone. He sends it behind the goal. Homan is there against Hagen again. It's picked up there, and then back out to the point for Meyer. Meyer skates in, wraps it around to Ryan Williams behind the goal. Williams skates to the far corner. He's still looking for a pass. Williams now circles to the blue line. He's still got the puck. Still skating. Williams with it near corner. He stops there. He passes behind the goal for Carroll. And now back to Williams. He tries to center it through, everyone. A lot of traffic there for the Mountain Hawks. It bounces off one of them. And then out in the neutral ice, where Drexel just skies it into the far corner as they make the change. Carlin has to play it here. And Lehigh gets it out of the zone. A hand pass is called. And we'll see where the faceoff comes with 10.04 left in the first period. Drexel out shooting Lehigh 8-3. But Lehigh has the lead on Chris Ramondelli's goal early in the first period. They drop the puck inside the Lehigh zone. Far circle. With Lehigh skating from left to right here. Drexel wraps it around the far side to the near side. But they are able to keep it into the zone only momentarily. The long pass ahead is just out of the reach of Friedman. Now Lehigh keeps it in the zone. Here's Cam Neely behind his own goal. They wrap it all the way around to the far side. Rister comes in. It goes all the way here to the near corner. Joseph Remedelli keeps it in the zone. But he's fighting two dragons there, and coming up with a puck is Devlin. Devlin is able to pass it up ahead. It's turned aside by one of the Mountain Hawks at the blue line, and Drexel just shovels it into the near corner. Pass up ahead, intercepted, but Lehigh's able to get it. And now here, near side neutral ice, wrapped all the way around. Drexel with some air and passing at the moment. They're not able to find each other. There's another pass intercepted by Ramondelli at the neutral zone. Drexel's able to get the loose puck, though. 
up ahead. It goes through the stick, and icing is the call as Warren is able to get there first. We're seeing a ton of sloppy passing right now, and a lot of it has to, is happening in the neutral zone. Um, whether it's Lehigh, whether it's Drexel, we're seeing sloppy passes, passes not connecting at all, uh, and that's why we're seeing a, a ton of icings at the moment as well. Drexel's had the sustained pressure here. They, they, they're, they're the ones who've been able to have uh, some prolonged possession of the puck. But Lehigh was able to cash in on Ramondelli's chance, and that's the reason why the score stands at one nothing. Mountain Hawks with 8.30 to play in the first period. Lehigh with the puck in their own far corner. They're able to break it out, but it's a pass that's just behind McGee. And jumping out, Carlin to freeze the puck about five feet outside of his crease. 8.16 left to go in the first period here at the 1923 Arena at Penn. Most of the fans here are seated near us on this end of the ice. There's only a, a smattering of maybe five or six fans on the far side. Winning the draw, Drexel keeping it in the zone. They wrap it around from the far corner and now stopping it at the far corner. Here's Steven Villa behind the goal. He skates out in front, takes the shot, save made on the pad, and a loose puck comes out to the near corner. McGee tries to pass it off the back end, and now he gets it back. Here at the near side blue line, Drexel still keeps it in the zone. Centering pass goes through everyone. And then on the other side, into the corner, Stephen Villa with a good hit. Villa with a puck, tries to skate out with it, but he's defended well by Calvaruso. Calvaruso is still there against Schickling. Calvaruso, good pass ahead for McGee. McGee coughs it right up, though. His long pass is intercepted. And Drexel just dumps it into the zone. Here's Joseph Ramondelli, the defenseman for Lehigh. Skates across his own blue line, gets it into the zone, and goes off for a change. 7-12 left in the first period. Meyer plays it. Now here's Carroll on the half boards into the neutral zone. Good passing from Drexel. Here's Hagen. Hagen is sent into the boards by Leach. Ryan Williams tries to center. The pass was broken up a little bit, and now here's Warren. Warren skating up with speed. On the left side, he drops it off. Calvarusa has to keep it in the zone. It wasn't meant for him. It was meant for somebody else. And now a long pass ahead. Finds Carroll. It's Carroll one on three. He gains the blue line. He's got Williams behind him. Williams has Hagen in front. Williams shoots. He scores. Ryan Williams took the pass from Carroll. And he skated into the slot. He was wide open and spurned the pass to his left for the wrister. And he beat Carlin up high. Well, I was just about to criticize uh, Williams there because he had a guy cutting straight into the middle uh, for an easy goal. But he took the harder option, but he knew he could deli deliver. 6.36 left in the first period. Chris Ramadelli scored for Lehigh, and now we have Ryan Williams. It's the two men who have recent hat tricks. And Hagen was the man who was skating in the middle there, wide open. Williams instead took the shot himself, and he trusted himself. Shots are 11 to 3. And now in the middle, backhand shot saved by Carlin off Cam Neely. Drexel now with control of the puck. Here's Kenosian who stops. Kenosian tries to center. And then the second attempt by Benedus is again off Carlin's blocker pad. On the near side corner, it goes into the Drexel zone. And then Ramondelli intercepts it. He takes the shot. And he, now he, that's actually McGee. Here's Joseph Ramondelli back to McGee, who passes out into the slot. And then it's loose in front for Brooks. It's still loose there. They fight for it. And then Drexel comes up with it. Never really made it to Gravenstein. Here's Neely. Neely tries the toe drag. Well defended. Here's Brooks now. He jumps on the loose puck. Brooks. Behind his goal. Passes up ahead, and now the blue line. Here's McGee. McGee across center, and he chips it into the zone where Gravenstein catches it with his stick and covers up with 5.19 to play with a 1-1 tie. 
I have to say, I haven't seen such a sloppy game you know, in a long time. And mostly on Lehigh's part. You've seen Drexel at least connect a couple of passes. Um, but Lehigh goes as McGee and Brooks and Ramondelli go, and McGee's just not good with his passes right now. We've seen Brooks make a couple of bad passes, so they need to set an example. Long pass ahead here in the near side corner. Drexel centering pass on the backhand. And Carson Newton was there, but he couldn't get much on the shot. Brooks can't keep it out of the zone. He finally gets it to neutral, and Newton picks it up there. Newton's in the corner. And now skating in with speed. Newton with a shot. Save made by Carlin. And now Warren and Ferreira are trading blows just outside the goalie's crease. The linesmen come in to break it up, and no one's going to the penalty box. 4.48 to play in the first period. The score is 1-1. And so the only player to the box here is the road warrior, Warren, who will head to the box for instigating that And that's one of those, if you're going to call that, you got to call it on both of them. Uh, and they're sending, um, who is that? Ferreira. Ferreira. Good. <laughs> we got some other commentators here, but it's not a terrible call. It's it, it's the right call. Uh, <laughs> now, they're, now, they're, now they're jawing at it here in the penalty box because there's no glass between them. They can talk to each other. Good. That's how it should be. That's that's how hockey was meant to be. But, yeah, you, you got to send both of them to the box if you're going to send anybody to the box. I, I would prefer them to see... To see to see nobody in the box, but um, you, you guys said both, if you're going to send any. Four on four. Ferrara and Warren are in the box with coincidental minors for roughing. The shot comes in, goes over the glove of Carlin, and then keeping it in the zone is Michalik. Sends it into the corner, and now behind the goal it wraps. It's four on four. Lehigh drops it off. Steven Villa intercepts, and now Homan finds himself all alone behind his own red line. Here's Levine. Levine sends it all the way down, 200 feet. His pass ahead, and you can see it in his body language there. He wasn't happy with himself on that pass. Icing is the call, and the faceoff will come back down. I mean, I just don't understand. He wasn't even open for that stretch pass. and He makes a bad pass there, and now it's icing. So, a uh, terrible pass, to be honest. And four on four makes the icings a little bit uh, tougher to deal with, with the legs. Homan wins the draw. And now Lehigh comes up with it. Here's Calvaruso back to home and in the corner. Calvaruso now behind his goal. He skates up ice with it. He's met by two Dragons. They can't stop him at the center. It's chipped away from him to Ramondelli. And now the shot behind the goal. Still skating with it, Levine. Levine into the corner. And now Calvaruso's there. He loses out. And now Church Vara skates up ice. He skates away from Ramondelli. Remondelli did enough to make him lose the puck. And now Drexel with control. Here's Meyer across his blue line. Long pass ahead for Hagen. Hagen now. He's on a tough angle. He skates in on Carlin. And Carlin stands his ground. 3.21 left to go in the first period. 34 seconds left on these coincidental minors for roughing. And the score is 1-1. We've seen a completely different Carlin today, I think. I mean, he's given up a goal, but there's really nothing you could do about that from Williams' shot. Uh, Carlin doing a very nice job so far. Yeah, he, he looked a little hesitant last weekend and gave up six goals, and that doesn't include the, sh the shootout goal that he allowed. Drexel with the puck in their own zone. It's Neely who coughs it up. But the Dragons are first to it again, and now it's back to Neely. And Churchvara, across center. He chips it into the zone, gives chase against Leach. Churchvara wins it. He gets a nice pass here, and now skating in behind the goal. And Neely, Neely takes the wrister, goes over the bar, it wraps around in the far corner. Churchvara is there to keep it in the zone. The players are out of the penalty box. It's five on five now. Back to Churchvara at the point. Here's Shagan. Shagan. Pass ahead, diagonally, into the slot, save made by Carlin on a good shot from Ferreira, right in the slot. And Carlin has stopped 14, or he's faced 14 shots and he stopped 13. The score is 1-1 with 2.35.
left to go in the first period. Carlin will watch them drop the puck to his right. Ferrara will take the draw against McGee. And it takes his skate, but Ferrara wins it only to get it to one of the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Skating through center. And it looks like Lehigh's offside. Let's see what the call is here. Uh, penalty. No, the referee had his arm up as if it were a penalty. He's confused or I'm confused. It's probably me. Face off one by Lehigh. They send it into the zone. Gravenstein is able to play it high off the glass. And then a long pass ahead is broken up well. And a big hit at center ice. We got a penalty coming up. And Drexel didn't like what happened there. There was a Drexel player skating across center, and Warren was there, and he left the leg out, and he took him out as he did a somersault over Warren. And so Warren goes to the box for the second time tonight. Two minutes on the board, 2.11 left on this first period clock, and Drexel goes on the power play, five on four. Calvaruso against Neely, face off inside the Lehigh zone. One by Calvaruso, but Neely's the first one to the puck at the boards. Gets it back out for Williams, the goal scorer and the hat trick hero last night. Sends it into the near corner, behind the goal and then into the far corner. Carroll fighting Calvaruso there. Four players contesting the puck as Lehigh just kills time. And then Ramondelli gets to the loose puck and ships it the length of the ice where Gravenstein stops it for Churchvara. Churchvara skates across his circle, across the blue line, and then backhands it to the far side. Racing in now is Cam Neely. Neely passes Leach. Leach directs him into the far corner, and then behind. And now here to Ryan Williams, near side point. Back to Williams on the point. He skates around. He's looking for a pass. He switches places with Churchvara. And he fires the wrister that's deflected off somebody's skate in front and into the netting behind the goal. Well, just to revisit the penalty there, uh, it's a terrible penalty by Warren, not only uh, because your team is not even doing well, even strength, but you go, to, you go down a player and have to go on the penalty kill. But it's dirty. I mean, he leaves the, leaves the leg out. You want to you hit somebody, go hit somebody illegally. But it's just a dirty play by Warren, and, and you kill your team by having to go on the penalty kill. Face off just outside the Lehigh zone, won by Steven Villa. He skates it into the zone, is able to pass it off to Benedus, and now Villa's got the puck in the corner. He passes out to the point. Does it tell? Gets it to Meyer. Meyer takes the wrister. It's deflected in front by Benedus wide to the left. Benedus skates it down in the corner. He's got time, and now does it tell with it at the blue line. Does it tell passes? He passes in front. Here's Steven Villa, and it's intercepted there, defended well, and now skating up ice here is Yeast. Yeast with the puck for the first time tonight, really, he passes out in front, he scores! Yeast skated up the left side, and McGee is the one who's able to tap it in the crease. A shorthanded goal from Lehigh to make it 2-1. Well, it's a phenomenal pass there, and, and you know, like we saw in the, uh, the first couple of minutes, we saw Ramondelli take control, and now we're seeing McGee. It's, it's always one of those three. It's always McGee, Ramondelli, or Brooks, so it seems. So uh, a, great, a great goal, but I'd like to see a little bit more production from the, uh, the other players on the team. We only see those three, really. But a great pass, by the way. And Drexel is going to be kicking themselves for giving up that shorthanded opportunity with 30 seconds left in the period. Ramondelli goes down hard, and now Drexel is going to take the penalty, it looks like. Ramondelli, and then he pushes him over. We'll see if that's going to be a penalty or a flop by Drexel. We'll see what happens. Looks like they're both going to the box. And if so, what a idiotic penalty from Ramondelli there to hit him so long after the original hit. Well, it's idiotic because, it, I mean, it's, it's a Bush League move. But, again, now you're going down a man when you're not putting out even strength. So that's, that's the biggest concern. But, 
Yeah, still, still just an, an idiotic, just like you said, an idiotic move to, to go after someone after they've already committed um, or, or got you on the penalty. Church Vara is the dragon in the box for taking down Ramondelli illegally as he was skating in again, shorthanded, uh, just after they had scored the goal uh, behind Gravenstein. Um, they came together and Church Vara uh, pushed Ramondelli to the ice. But at least as a positive, this is getting a bit chippy and it's real hockey, you know? Yeah, we do like to see the, uh, the, the teams show a little bit of aggression and uh, let, let us know that it means something to them. Um, we don't, we don't want to see too much instigation between them, but now the referees are, are, are talking things over. Where's the faceoff going to be? And uh, because it was a, a dead puck penalty, the faceoff will stay inside the circle. Faceoff won by Drexel. Ryan Williams crosses the blue line, tries to toe drag. Ramondelli defends it well. Ten seconds left. Drexel gets it in on goal. And we have a stoppage here. We'll see what it is. The referee's checking the net. It looks like he's dissatisfied with the way it's set up. I don't believe that he thought Carlin ever stopped the play, although lately in the ACHA we've seen teams, uh, referees stop play very early um, in front of the net. Well, this was Carlin's strategy last week, wasn't yeah. it, to yeah. take, take, the, take the goal off its mooring? So, um, it's it, never, it never looked like it was off its moorings. That's the thing. The, the referee skated in they hard. Must, they must know his strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure. Two seconds left in the penalty, in the, in the period. And Drexel's unable to get a shot in on goal after winning the faceoff. 2-1 Lehigh is the score. We've got goals first from Ramondelli, and then he set up the goal with McGee at the end of the second period, shorthanded to take the 2-1 lead. Ryan Williams scored the goal for the Dragons. And so we head into the first intermission, Lehigh 2, Drexel 1 on the PTI Network. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Drexel and Lehigh in the second period. Lehigh leading two goals to one as the players skate out onto the ice after the first intermission. Alongside me is Brian Augsburger, and I'm Michael Augsburger. Thanks for making us a part of your Saturday night on the PTI Network and Saturday Night Hockey here in the ACHA. The two goals from Lehigh came from Chris Remondelli, their leading scorer, and McGee. Meanwhile, Ryan Williams, who scored a hat-trick last night down in Annapolis against Navy, provided the scoring for Drexel in the first period. Lehigh scored first, despite the run of play, and then Williams tied it up with his blistering wrister from the slot, and then McGee was able to score shorthanded towards the end of that first period. The shots are 16-6, to Drexel in favor, but, Brian, they haven't been able to get as much going against Lehigh, who have taken more of their chances. Yeah, I think uh, in the couple of college games that we've seen so far, this has stayed true to uh, what has happened before. The team that is dominating the play is actually not winning. Uh, we've seen that a lot so far in our games. Um, Drexel dominating the play. They're a little bit more crisper, not, although not much crisper in their passes. Lehigh haven't been able to get a lot started yet they're up two goals they just had a couple of uh, moments of brilliance from uh, McGee and Ramondelli. Drexel skating from left to right as we drop the puck in the second period the Dragons win the draw and send it in on Carlin who is able to direct it into the corner and Lehigh clears it all the way down it did go off somebody in the neutral zone so icing is waved off Still inside the box are Ramondelli and Church Vara, who have taken coincidental minors for roughing at the end of the second or end of the first period. Le Lehigh's able to just backhand it into the Drexel zone. Picking it up there was Cam Neely, who coughs up the puck, and then Drexel races back up on it as it's three on two. And a big hit there from Warren on the Dragon. Is a they're able to get it into the corner and then back out to the point for the shot from McGee, or from Desitel, never makes it in on goal. A second shot here from Benedus is padded aside. 
And then a huge hit on the far side. Neely put Brooks into the boards. Carlin just picks it up in his glove to force a face-off with 18.53 left in the second period. And we saw at the end of the first period the two teams are getting a little bit chippy and uh, it makes for some entertaining hockey. Face-off near a circle. Won by Lehigh, but it's back to the Dragons at the point. Lehigh's able to get it now at the half boards. And now, now players are just going for the man, really, and not so much for the puck. Near side corner, Lehigh tries to backhand it out of the zone. They get it to the half boards and no farther, and then finally they break it out of the zone. Here, the near side of their own zone, Calvaruso. And then up ahead, Ramondelli isn't able to stop it as the shot comes in, and it's stopped by Carlin. Drexel with another shot, Stephen Villa, but he's turned aside. Well, piggybacking off of what you said there, we're, seeing, we're now seeing players go right after each other. Um, and one thing that we don't see here, that we do see in the NHL, that polices the game is fighting. So you get a quick fight, it's over, and the te two teams go back to actually playing hockey as opposed to going after each other. So, yeah, obviously that's, they're not going to do that, but yeah, maybe you like to see it. Interesting things to, to think about in terms of the fighting of the game. Uh, studies on 538, who did a great job with their election uh, coverage. We'll have to get back to that as they drop the puck to the right of Carlin. It's won by Lehigh, but kept in the zone momentarily. And then a long pass ahead up to the blue line. Pass into the middle for Ramondelli, who is shadowed very well. And then the shot one-timer from the pass from Ramondelli. It goes wide to the left. Goldstein had the one-timer. Ryan Williams is able to get to the puck into the corner. And then back here for Williams at the center of his zone. He saucers it up ahead for Church Vara. He sends the shot in, and it's blocker to side and covered up by Carlin with 17.46 to play in the second period. 2-1 Lehigh over Drexel so far. And the fights, you can see the data show that there's a lot of tension and tension and penalties taken. And then eventually there's the fight. And you can see the tension kind of denouement, and that actually helps the game in the NHL. Exactly, it does, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people want to see fighting stay. And, you know, soccer, you see people going after people one after another after another because you can't really police the game. They don't fight. They just bump chests or, or bump heads or headbutt people. So um, Handbags and something. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, but I, I like to see uh, a bit more fighting, to, to be honest, to police the game a bit. Racing up the right side here, Lehigh. Rister comes in. Cravenstein makes the save. McGee with a shot from the far circle. 17-29 to play in the second period. And the score is 2-1 Lehigh. Be interesting if referees here could give yellow cards and red cards. Now that we're talking about the soccer a little bit, uh, they're able to send players off for extended periods of time and misconduct as well. But Lehigh wins the draw and a great pad save made by Gravenstein. And the rebound was loose. And McGee put it in on goal and Gravenstein shut the door. 17-23 left to go. 2-1 still. Thanks to Gravenstein. Well, I give a lot of credit to Gravenstein there, not only because it was a good save, but he hasn't had much to do. Uh, I'd honestly pull a muscle right there uh, if it were me because he, he hasn't had nothing to do at all. And actually, it looks like he's fixing a bit of his equipment here, but I don't think he's injured. So uh, good on Gravenstein there. You need to get on the hot yoga then if you can't make that save. 17-23 left to go. Face off to Gravenstein's right. It's won by the Dragons. They wrap it around near side to far. And there Carson Newton is able to get it up ahead into the neutral zone. It's tapped ahead by Shagan. And they race to the puck in front. Lehigh with control now. In the near side corner, here's Homan. Homan stops. He's hounded hard there by Carson Newton. Eventually they get tied up enough. And McGee is the one who comes up with it. Pass ahead for McGee, back to him on the 1-2 is just a little bit too far for him. And so it's loose at neutral for a while. And eventually it comes back into the neutral zone after a brief stay in the Lehigh zone. It's chipped ahead by Drexel and then sent all the way back into the Drexel zone by Lehigh. They skate for it there. Behind the goal and then wrapping around with speed up the right side. Here's the Dragons. Desatel 
takes the shot, it's blocked in front, and then Lee scoops it out of the zone. Now it's kept in. Well there by Meyer, who wraps it around, centering pass is intercepted there, and now across the center of the ice, Lehigh is unable to get it to keep control. It comes back in all the way down on Gravenstein, who covers up. He had some time, but there were a few Mountain Hawks racing up on him. And with 16-12 left in the second period, it's still 2-1 as Gravenstein covers up for the faceoff. Lehigh is 7-3-1 on the season under Tom Lasig. Drexel 8-4 after the overtime win, thanks to Ryan Williams' game-winning goal last night in Annapolis. Lehigh wins the draw and the shot all the way from the point from Joseph Ramondelli goes right into the chest of Gravenstein. And so the faceoff comes right back out again. Brooks with the wrister. Save Gravenstein and Lehigh gets it into the neutral zone. Now up ahead. Benedouce off the boards. He takes the shot. It goes over the bar and to the right of Carlin. Passing up ahead, Lehigh, it goes under the skate of McGee, and Drexel's able to get to the puck first. Here's Cam Neely. Neely tried to get it to Benedus at the blue line, and now Chris Remondelli tries to backhand it up for Brooks. It's broken up. And now up the far side, Kenosian dumps it into the corner, and offside is the call. 15-29 left in the second period. We're still looking for this first goal of this period. We had three in the first period, two from Lehigh, one from Drexel. The faceoff all the way down in the Drexel zone. Calvaruso to take the draw for Lehigh against Steven Villa. Calvaruso wins the draw. Rister comes in and never makes it to Gravenstein. Rebound came out to the near side point. Here's Warren. Warren tries to get it in for Goldstein, but... Stephen Bill is there to stand his ground. And now, bad turnover. Out in front, Yates, the shot. Save me. At the far side, half boards now. It comes back out of the zone. Drexel is going to have to regroup. Shot. Blocker to side by Carlin from the blue line. It's backhanded back in on him. He lets it go wide to the right. Wraps around to the near side corner and then back behind the goal. Here's Levine. Levine's long pass ahead. Intercepted. And then goes under the sti stick of Stephen Villa. Villa now has it at the red line. He sends it in on Warren. Warren chops it down at the far side half boards. He passes up ahead. And now here's Goldstein. Goldstein takes the wrister. It never makes it to the goal. Calvarusa now with it on the back end. He circles, takes the wrister, blocked in front. And now back around, Devlin is able to get it up high off the glass, and they get it out into center. Calvaruso there at his own blue line, right in front of the Drexel bench in front of us. Lehigh sends it in on goal. Gravenstein has to let it go behind him. Picking it up is Mazur. And now in the corner, Ryan Williams to Shagan. And now Michalik passes to Crowell. Carroll lost control of the puck. A poor turnover. And now Ryan Williams has to pick it up. Williams skates in on goal. He's on the backhand. Gets it behind the goal. The centering pass hits Williams' skate. He tries to dive to make the shot. Now two on two the other way. Here's Ramondelli. Ramondelli passes. It's offside. His pass was intended for Del Gizzo. And he couldn't corral the puck. Ramondelli with a rare mistake there. Or he just wasn't on the same page as Del Gizzo. And with 13.30 to play in the second period, Lehigh still hanging on to the 2-1 lead. It's been back and forth here in the second. 20 shots on goal to 13. But in the period, it's 6-4 in favor of Lehigh. The pass from Church Vara. And a good play defensively by Chris Remondelli to keep it in the zone momentarily. But Drexel has control. A long pass ahead. It goes into the Drexel bench. And the players take cover. 13-13 left in the second period. Drexel skating from left to right at their home arena here at the campus of Penn. We spent some time before the game walking around campus. And what a historic, beautiful place they have here at Penn. 
Franklin Field was hosting the CYO uh, Catholic Grade School League football game that we saw over across the street. Face off in the neutral zone. Shagan now skating in. Shagan defended well by Warren. And now Ferrara. Ferrara skates behind the goal. He's looking for a centering pass. Gets to the far corner. Long pass here across the slot. It goes through Churchvara. And then kicked aside from Lehigh's man, Ramondelli, who would have been skating in all alone on goal if he was able to just cross his own blue line. And now Shagan with it in the corner. He takes the wrister. He hits the post. And now keeping it in the zone at the near side half boards is Churchvara. The pass in ahead, gets back out to Church Bar, it skitters out here, and now a pass in for Newsom. Carson Newton with it, near side corner, he's pinned up against the boards, he centers it, and it's defended well by Lehigh, and now Brooks. Brooks holds on to it for a while, he tries to find Ramondelli, who skates in. Dravenstein comes out of his goal to play it, Michaelich tries to send it up along the far side boards. Big hit there, Newton sends Brooks sprawling to the ice. Pass ahead here for Shagan. Shagan's able to tap it away from Levine. And now Shagan skating in. He takes the shot. Slapper goes wide. And it comes all the way out to center and through the neutral zone to the Drexel zone where Meyer passes it ahead. Meyer gets it in on the Lehigh zone or into the Lehigh zone into the corner where Levine wraps it around near side to far. It's soccered out. By Goldstein and now skating up the far side to Calvaruso. He makes a great move. Yates centers it and it's kept. And then we got a penalty coming up as the net's off its moorings. We'll see who goes to the box. A hook is the call. 11 29 left to play in the second period, nearing the midway point of this game. Hook. Where's the hook? Two minutes on the board for Meyer, and so Lehigh goes on the power play. Face off to Gravenstein's right, and the main killers are out there for Lehigh, and they're not killing the penalty, but they've killed defenses with this scoring attack. Here's Calvaruso at the slot. He passes to the far side, back to him. Calvaruso passes to McGee, who whiffs on the one-timer. It goes behind the goal where Ramondelli passes it back out to the point. Passes in here to McGee. And now Calvaruso back to McGee at the circle. Calvaruso at the point. Rister comes in, goes through everybody. And then Gravenstein covers up, and he is down. It looks like he had split a little bit awkwardly as the net's off its moorings with 10.59 to play. He's getting up and is just kind of holding his back. He, you can tell he's stretched out a little bit in ways that are inhumane. And so with 1.31 left to go in the power play, we'll see if Gravenstein needs a replacement. It looks like he's okay to continue. Face off to his right is one eventually by Lehigh's Ramondelli. And now Calvaruso with it. He skates into the slot, gets it to McGee. McGee loses it for a second in his skates and then passes it back out to Calvaruso, who's not able to keep it in the zone. McGee, you can see in his body language there, was upset either with himself or perhaps with his teammate as well. Here's McGee. Good pass ahead for him, who skates in on goal and wraps it around near side to far. Then Drexel is able to get to the loose puck in the slot and ship it 200 feet. Carlin with it. He backhands it up along the boards behind his goal. 52 seconds left on the power play. Joseph Ramondelli passes across the rink to McGee. McGee makes a nice move on Carson Newton. And he passes up ahead for Chris Ramondelli, who's sent to the ice. But McGee picks up the loose puck, and he's not able to get it in on net. McGee tries to center it. It's off a stick, and then high into the air. Into the corner it goes. Churchvara against McGee with 29 seconds left in the power play back out to the point and then the pass into the corner Ramondelli loses out to Church Vara Ramondelli still going hard with Yace coming in in support Yace looking for the pass and he finally gets it Michaelich sends him into the boards he tries to backhand it out of the zone but can't Joseph Ramondelli sends it in it's blocked in front by Church Vara and then he sends it the length of the ice as Drexel kills the penalty 
9.28 to go in the second period. Still 2-1 Lehigh. Benedus at the neutral zone. We'll give the puck right to Lehigh. This will be icing on Drexel. And it looked like one of the Mountain Hawks, perhaps Friedman, was there. But it wasn't before the Dragons. Nine fourteen left to go in the second period. The score is two one. Lehigh face off in Lehigh zone. Lehigh skating from right to left. Won by the Dragons, and they're not able to do much with it offensively. The shot, no, no goal. High stick is the call. Drexel shot it from the near side point. It was a wrister that didn't have much velocity on it, and it was tipped in front by a high stick, so the goal will be wiped off. Well, I was literally just about to say that there are a lot of opportunities out in front of goal. They're taking shots, wrist shots, slap shots from the point, um, and the the Drexel players and the, and the Lehigh players are there for a tip, but they just miss it every time. So there are opportunities there. They just need to connect with uh, with the puck as it comes in. That time they were able to connect, but illegally as it, the stick was above the crossbar in that instance. 8.50 to go in the second period. Drexel would have had the equalizer had that been a legal goal. They're still looking for the equalizer as it stands. Centering pass in from Cam Neely is broken up in front, and then Lehigh skating the other way. Up ahead, long pass for Lochran. He's not able to get there before Mazer. And now Ryan Williams with it. Williams passes up to Kenosian. And now Williams with it again. Left-handed stick. He takes the toe drag through his legs. Now behind the goal, he still has possession of the puck. Centers it in front. Hagen with a shot. Save made by Carlin. And again, and again, and it goes in. Ryan Williams ties the game with his second goal. And Carlin stopped two shots, three shots, but was unable. And now he is furious with the head official. He is saying, I have the puck right here. And he takes the puck and he threw it across the ice. The referee gave the goal. Carlin's helmet is off, and he took the puck in his blocker hand and chucked it across the ice in fury because of what he thought was a goal call that should not have been made. Never seen such irateness. Well, it's kind of a temper tantrum, but maybe he has a he has a point. I wish we had instant replay, uh, or even you know slow motion. We could we could see something, but we have no idea really from here. He didn't even have his blocker on or his glove on at the faceoff there. I mean, these these college referees are always trying to move the game along. There's definitely no worry about the length of games in the ACHA as there is in other sports. We won't name them here, but in that case, Carlin. I mean, it was his own fault. He took off his helmet, he took off his glove, he took off his blocker, and the referee didn't wait for him to put his stuff back on. Well, I think the fact that he didn't even get a penalty on that kind of indicates that he, he may have a point, and the referee felt bad that he might have made a, a bad call there. So that might be some indication of, of what happened on that, is that play. Is that what you do? I mean, we're, we're, we're hopeful that this game isn't going to get out of hand. The, the teams have been be, have been getting chippy with one another, and if you don't police that, then it's only going to lead to more problems, or, or do you like that? Uh, well, I, I don't I don't love it. I mean, there's really nothing you can do when you, you, know, you don't have instant replay here. You can't go to Toronto yeah. uh, like you can in the NHL, so it's hard for these referees to tell, but uh, they need they need some help. Uh, now, now, we're, now we're really getting chippy. We got we got a late hit on, uh, on Ramondelli here. Williams hit, I think it's Williams who hit Ramondelli. This is getting a bit chippy, a bit too chippy. Eventually, you're going to have to start sending guys to the box or policing it a little bit. 8.06 left to go. The score is 2-2. It's well poised if we're able to keep the emotions in check a little bit. I think what we saw from Carlin, even though he might have had a point, was a little bit of a, of a temper tantrum, as you said. Face off, won by Drexel. They send it into the Lehigh zone, near side corner. Shagan's there to get to it first. Behind the goal, Homan's able to defend him well. Now Chris Remondelli here, near side half boards, passes up ahead to center. But losing the puck to Churchvara was Goldstein. Churchvara skates 
around well, and then Newton is taken down from behind. No call made. The referee was emphatic there. He even wiped off any call as if people were looking to him to raise his hand. Into the far corner, a lot of players sprawling to the ice now. They're throwing themselves at each other. Into the far corner, Lehigh picks it up. Here's Joseph Ramondelli. He's pinned up against the boards by two dragons. And now the puck is loose out here. Drexel with it still. They fired in on goal. Carlin was not confident in that glove, and he let it fall out of his glove into the area in front of him, but it was swept aside by Lehigh. Now still in the zone, Drexel, as they make a change and get it deep. Schickling against Homan. Into the corner. And now gloved down by Rodriguez. Steven Villa gets it to Rodriguez on the near side corner. Schickling there to help him. Churchvara centers it. It goes off the skate and then out of the zone. It's going to be a delayed offside call as Drexel has the tag up. Joseph Ramondelli gets it out of the zone now. Long pass ahead. And now skating up ice is McGee. McGee centers it. It goes through Brooks. Well defended. And then Ramondelli tries the backhand center. And it goes right to the stick of Schickling, who's able to get it out of the zone. 6.15 to play. In the second period, Drexel has tied the game with another Ryan Williams goal. Drexel sends it in. Off the stick of Carlin, directed into the near corner. Steven Villa centers it. Rodriguez is there. And Carlin stood tall. Chipped out of the zone by Lehigh after the rebounds. And then chopped down by Jake Devlin. Devlin. And then, oh, the players are still looking as Brooks went down a little bit too easily there. No penalty called. The players just pushing each other and shoving. Here's Brooks. Brooks and Devlin, who are pushing each other on the other end of the ice. A penalty called. We'll see who it's on. Penalty here is on Lehigh. It could be on both. But it was Brooks and Devlin who were on the other side of the ice, shoving each other. Brooks went to the ice barely easily. And after they came to the other side, Brooks is the one who takes the penalty. No, I was I was literally not looking at the puck at all and just watching those two. And now uh, Brooks throws his helmet into the penalty. But this, this is getting into ridiculous. the wrong penalty. Box. Yeah, and now he, now he can't reach his helmet. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what he's going to do now. He has no helmet. <laughs> he can't get and back. None of the Drexel players are helping him. Right, I wouldn't either. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, it's a shame because he, he he missed out on the puck as it came to him. He just looked for the body uh, on, on the play right there, and then he took a high stick. Two minutes on the board for his penalty. And Drexel with a prime opportunity to take the lead. Here's Church Vara at the point. Passes to the far corner. Centering pass for Carroll. It goes behind him. And now Church Vara into the slot. It's defended well by Homan. And now into the corner it goes. Carroll with Neely there against Calvaruso. Carroll comes up with the puck behind the goal. He's watched by Homan. And then over to the far side point. Ryan Williams. And now here for Williams. Passes through the slot. Inside the shot goes wide. Not enough on the shot from Neely. Carroll gets the rebound to Williams. Near side half boards. Skates into the corner. Calvaruso defending. Homan lets him go. Ryan Williams skates over to the far corner. And now the shot. Save made. And a wide open net. And they try to lift it. It's in this crease. And they're not able to get it. And finally they score. It's Ryan Williams. Another hat trick. Six goals in one weekend, and Ryan Williams takes the lead for the Dragons. 3-2 is the score with 4.33 left on the power play goal. Well, uh, uh, another, what can you say about Ryan Matthews? Uh, Ryan, Ryan Matthews. <laughs> well, you, you can say Ryan <laughs> Matthews fumbles. The yeah. there, you can say he fumbles and gets hurt, hurt too easily. <laughs> no, but Ryan Williams, uh, just a great shot there again. Uh, he's just being in the right place at the right time. But you can really blame that all on Brooks being in the penalty box while that happens. On a stupid penalty at that. Brooks gave in to the instigation on the other side of the ice, and that cost his team. Now the players are really yelling at each other here. No love lost between these two teams. Checked him into the bench on the far side. One of the Lehigh players into his own bench. And now 4.15 to play. Here's Leach. Leach takes the wrister. It's blocked off the skate. And then McGee passes in front for Yace. Yace tries to get it through between the post and Gravenstein. But he closed the door. 
25 shots to 15, three goals to two. Drexel in the lead with 4.07 to play in the second. Your teams and, and parents and fans are maybe getting upset of how chippy this is getting, but it's 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 making the game a lot better. Uh, you see, you can see it means a lot more to the players. You can see it means a lot more to the fans. And we have another penalty. Drexel taking that penalty just off the faceoff inside their own zone. And so Lehigh should have another great opportunity here to tie the game. 4-0-1 in the second period. And we'll see which of the Dragons goes to the box. Desitel is the dragon who sits next to his teammates, but separated by the barrier. Faceoff is won by Lehigh, but they're able to get it out to the near side point and try to chip it into the corner, but it goes out of play and beats the netting, so the fans have a souvenir. It's good we see Ramondelli on the ice right now. I think this is where you need to get it on his stick and let him make a play and boost your team a bit after uh, kind of deflated the last couple, three minutes. And he wins the faceoff for Lehigh. They get it into the zone finally, and Shagan is there to send it the length of the ice. It's into the near corner, and then it bounces for Carlin to play behind his goal. 1.36 left in the power play because of Desitel's penalty. Lehigh skating up ice with it. They pass it up ahead. Michalik is there to stop it before it enters the Drexel zone. And then the pass here is intercepted by Carson Newton, and the Dragons will kill some time as the lights flicker here at Fast of 1923 Arena. They send it the length of the ice again. Carlin stops it on his stick. He leaves it for Joseph Homan with 1.10 left in the penalty. Long pass ahead for Chris Remondelli. And you can't really be wasting his time out on the ice by not getting it into the offensive zone. Eventually he's going to come out, going to have to come off for a change. Here's McGee. McGee skating in, near side boards, gets it to the point. Calvaruso has to maneuver it well, keeps it in the zone. McGee now, half boards. Back to Calvaruso. Back to McGee. It's blocked. And then McGee takes the shot. It goes through the crease. And Gravenstein covers up. Waiting right in front of Gravenstein was Chris Remondelli, if he didn't handle it well, but he did. 2.43 left to go in the second period. 42 seconds on the penalty to Desitel. And Drexel leads by one goal, 3-2. to two. Remondelli still out there, and he wins the draw again for Lehigh. Here's McGee, long pass to Joseph Remondelli in the slot, Yeast, And now Joseph Remondelli, here's Calvaruso, shoots wide to the left on the wrister. And now Re Calvaruso shoots again. Great save made by Gravenstein. And he hit the post with a shot. Here's McGee. McGee with it. Passing it up to the point. Calvaruso. It's deflected up. And then Ramondelli. Here's Joseph Ramondelli. Skates past his brother. Into the corner. He's taken down. No penalty called. He's got to get up off his knees to play the puck. And we have a stoppage here. We'll see what it is. A trip is the call. It was a penalty. It wasn't called by the referee in the, in the actual zone, but it was called by the referee here at center. And for six seconds, we'll have a five on three as Joseph Remondelli was taken down by Matt Meyer. 2.07 left in the second period. 3-2 Drexel. Three goals all from Ryan Williams with his second hat trick of the weekend. And he still has another 22 minutes and change to score more. Lehigh, interestingly, is taking as long as possible because their power play players were all on the ice for the entirety of those last two minutes, and now their coach, Tom Lasig, calls the timeout. So they were wasting as much time as possible before the timeout uh, to make sure these guys could get a rest. Well, it's a good idea. I mean, a tired Ramondelli is better than all the players on your team really except for probably McGee and and, uh, and Brooks uh, as we see in the, the only two games that we've seen um, you know I, I would take a tired from Delhi yeah. over all of them yep. and so this will get him a little bit of rest as Lasik takes his time out Drexel still has theirs with 207 in the second period left to play
Chris Remondelli and McGee scored the goals for Lehigh. Both of those came in the first period. Remondelli opened the scoring in this game in the first 10 minutes of the first. And then McGee scored on a shorthanded goal in the last two minutes of the first period to take a 2-1 lead. Drexel has scored the only two goals of this period. And so they have the 3-2 lead. Face off to Gravenstein's right is won by Drexel. And they will airmail it the entirety of the ice. So the 5-1-3 is done. That was only six minutes, or six seconds, I should say. Six minute 5-1-3 would be interesting. And we have now here McGee skating up ice. Now Calvaruso stops. This is still the same scoring line one that was out there for the last power play. And then Drexel, after Lehigh is able to get it into the zone, they are able to send it all the way down. And then Carroll fights Calvaruso. And eventually Calvaruso gets to the puck first. Drexel has been able to kill this portion of the penalty very well. It's Matt Meyer in the box, and Lehigh is offside. But we'll have another penalty coming up. It's interference as Lehigh was offside because one of their players was taken down at the blue line. The call is made, and it's going to be Michalik heading to the box. And so a minute and 18 seconds of a five-on-three is coming for the Mountain Hawks. This is prime for them to be able to tie this game. And so, McGee takes the draw. And he'll take it against Cam Neely. And McGee wins the draw. Back to Yates at the point. Five on three for Lehigh. Here's Calvaruso. Shoots. It's in front. And they are able to get it home. Wait. Lehigh feels they scored. And finally the referee gives no. The referee wipes it off. He's pointing as if it were a goal, but he's not pointing to the center circle. He's pointing to the circle inside the zone. Lehigh thought that they had scored. Gravenstein had covered up. Well, I don't think we're going to get an explanation on this, um, but I, I think he kicked it. Uh, I really couldn't tell. We're not getting an explanation. They're only talking to the coaches. And so. we can't see whether the puck actually entered the net. We had Gravenstein sprawled out. And um, the, the the referees are talking to the coaching staff. So the official call is no goal, but we're not exactly sure what happened. And if you're Lehigh, you can't let this deflate you right now. You got you got three on two that you ha or three on five, five on three. <laughs> One of those. Five on three for Lehigh for the next minute. And a minute and seven left here in the in the period. Here's Calvaruso after Ramondelli wins the draw. Yates winds up. It's deflected wide and into the near side corner. And then a huge hit. But Calvaruso gets it. And now Yates again. He shoots. Club save made by Gravenstein. And then out in front, there were two players shielding his view. But he saw through the, the two men. And so here we have a Lehigh player with his helmet off. And another dragon heading to the box. It's Cam Neely who's going to sit. And we're not sure for how long because it's not going to fit on the scoreboard. And now with his helmet off and his gloves off and his stick on the ice is Lehigh's McGee. Well, I think that's a terrible call, to be honest with you. I thought it was a completely clean hit. Was that for this hit here? Yeah, oh, The it was. hit check? That's yeah. a, that looked pretty clean to Absolutely me. Absolutely clean. It's just the way that he reacted. Uh, it seemed, seemed as though he had a concussion, which is so, you know, I, I understand you stopped the play, but, you know, I don't think you call a penalty there because it wasn't a penalty. And it didn't it look clean. high either. No, it wasn't It wasn't high. I think it was completely legal. And I think it's one of those things that it's been chippy all game and you kind of want to, um, you, you want to police it a bit. You want to do away with those, uh, th those kinds of hits. They are starting to call it a little bit more tightly now after seeing the players go at it as they have over the last 20 minutes or so. Face off inside the Drexel zone, one by Drexel. It is still a five on three as Lehigh doesn't have anyone in the box. Drexel has three men in the box. And so, 35 seconds left in the period. Miggy winds up, he shoots, it goes over the bar from the slot. Back to Ramondelli, and then Miggy again, and a great save by Gravenstein. And the players are just throwing themselves at each other. Haymakers now. Punches in front of the goal. Two players are down in the ice. And we'll see what the referees make of this chaos. 27 seconds left in the period. It's still 3-2 Drexel. 
Well, I gotta be honest. I, I'm absolutely loving this. This, 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 is, this is how hockey should be played. This is how this is how it is in the NHL. You know, you you get amongst the uh, you're in the crease of it. You you gotta clear it out. You, you can't let them can't let them dictate the other team dictate uh, the pace of play. You can't let them stand in, in right in front of the key, in, right in front of the goalie there. So I, I love it. As long as it stays clean, I love it. It is still the five on three. Face off outside the Drexel zone. Won by the Dragons. They're able to get it out of the zone again. But not the length of the ice. Here's Ramondelli. 20 seconds left. He's got Benedus defending him. And now Calvaruso at the point. He passes to the near side corner. Back to Calvaruso. Passes to Yeast. Yeast thinks about the shot. Passes through the slot. Back to Calvaruso. Yeast now. Eight seconds. Shot blocked in front by Church Varek. He's not able to clear the zone, though. Here's Calvaruso. One second left to Yeast. And it goes through his skates. And that will do it for this second period. And what a period. 3-2 the score. Drexel has the one goal lead, but they have three men in the box. Now, 36 seconds is left on Michaelic's penalty. Cam Neely's penalty has only started, and he has 153 left. So we'll have five on three hockey for the next 36 seconds in the third period, and then Michaelic will come out of the box. Neely will have to wait for his minute and 53 to be over. 25 shots on goal for Drexel, 22 for Lehigh. But the score, the Dragons have the 3-2 lead over the Mountain Hawks as we head to the second intermission. And we'll be back on PTI's Hockey Radio Network when we come back here to Philadelphia for the third period. Welcome back on PTI Network's coverage of the ACHA. Drexel has a 3-2 lead against the Lehigh Mountain Hawks here at the University of Pennsylvania's Class of 1923 Arena in Philadelphia. Alongside Brian Augsburger, I'm Michael Augsburger. Thank you for joining us. It's Saturday night, hockey night, and we have had almost fight night here at the Class of 23 Arena. There are two dragons in the box to live out the remainder of their penalties First of all, Michaelic is in the box with 36 seconds left on his penalty. And then Cam Neely, who sent McGee sprawling into the bo- into the boards on what we had thought was a very clean but ferocious hit. The referees deemed it otherwise as McGee's helmet went flying off. And he is in the box for a further 1 minute and 53 seconds. So Lehigh has a 5-on-3 as they skate from left to right here to start this third period. They're in the road, brown jerseys with the gold and white trim, and Lehigh across the chest, white numbers and black pants. While Drexel is in the home gold uniforms, we mentioned earlier this season that they look a little bit like Sweden. They have the blue trim on the shoulders with the dragon at their chest and the blue pants. Face-off of Lehigh's five against Drexel's three out there for the Mountain Hawks is McGee. He is flanked by Yace and Chris Ramondelli against Ryan Benedus to drop the puck in the third period. Lehigh wins the draw, and Ramondelli skates in across the blue line. He stops. It's five on three. Passes across, and now Joseph Ramondelli to Chris Ramondelli, who centers it, but Church Vara got his stick on it first. Lehigh keeps it in the zone. Back out into the far corner. Now on the doorstep, Yates takes the shot. It goes over the bar, and now he races for it and can't keep it in the zone. Ten seconds left in the penalty for the five on three. It comes all the way down for Carlin to play as the final seconds tick off. Five on four for the next minute, 15. Now racing up the left side is Calvaruso. Sends it into the near corner for Yeast. Yeast has it, and he's got... Ramondelli there as well. Desitel defending him. Here's Ramondelli with it in the corner. He drops it for Yeast. And now Ramondelli here in the corner still. And now Joseph Ramondelli passes along the blue line to Calvaruso. Long pass ahead for Cal- into the center. And Yeast wasn't able to get anything on it. And now Church Varo with it with 45 seconds left in the penalty. Drexel killing a great job here. They've killed not one, not two, but three or four penalties lately. And now two on one the other way. Here's Church Vara. He's got Carroll in the middle. Carroll shoots. He scores. Church Vara. 
Carl took the shot. It went off the pad of Carlin, and Carroll got the rebound. And we have an unsportsmanlike penalty coming up on Lehigh as one of the Mountain Hawks slammed his stick into the boards on the far side. It looks like one of the Mountain Hawks will go to the box. Well, it was a great finish, and it's set up by poor play in, in their own zone, in Lehigh's own zone. Uh, passing it through the corner when no one was there, and then and then McGee getting tangled out, thing it up. <laughs> and now we're getting fans screaming at each other. Actually, it's just two Drexel fans, typical Philly skills. Just <laughs> 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 I'm going back and go on the air. <laughs> Here's the faceoff at center. 18:36 to play, and we have an unsportsmanlike penalty. It won't bring on. An extra, or it won't take off a man for Lehigh, but Joseph Ramondelli's in the box for what looks like a 10 minute misconduct. Up the left side, Churchvara gets it at neutral ice. Carlin can't catch it in his glove, and he's directs it into the far corner. Still 10 seconds left on the power play. Up the left side, they chip it into the zone, and it's picked up by Shagan at his own corner. They get it out to the neutral zone, and Drexel has killed now four penalties in a row with two five-on-threes in order to preserve the lead. And not only did they preserve it, they've extended it. Into the far corner it goes of the Lehigh zone. They wrap it around, far side to behind the goal where it's picked up there by Warren. Warren gets stripped of the puck by Schickling. Schickling with it now. He drops it off. Out in front. The shot goes wide to the right. And now for Drexel, here's Rodriguez. Skates into the corner, passes for Schickling, and now Steven Villa. Villa at the circle, he shoots. It's deflected high by Warren. It stays in play, though, and here's Friedman. Friedman up the left side is able to get it into center and dump it in to make the change. 17-20 left in the game, and the long pass ahead is tipped into the Lehigh zone by Schickling. Stopped for Homan by Carlin, and now Homan stops on a dime in the far corner. He passes up ahead here to the near side for Leach. Leach can't get it out of the zone. Meyer gets it up to Ryan Williams. He passes. The shot saved by Carlin. Into the far corner it goes. And now Yates gets it up ahead for McGee. McGee skates up ice. Tries to make a move. Is at center. Gets it into the slot. And he's shoved aside. Yates now against Desatel. And Desatel wraps it around far side and near along the boards. And it's... At the near side, half boards, and now at center ice. Lehigh is able to get it on a hand pass at his own blue line. It was Homan who passed it to Yeast. And so with 16.31 left, we still have a 4-2 game as the faceoff will come down in the Lehigh zone. Well, lucky, luckily, Carlin's been on. Uh, we've seen a great forechecking by Drexel so far. Uh, they'll need to keep that up to keep Lehigh on their toes. Face off, one by Lehigh. It's kicked along the boards, and now Cam Neely passes to Benedouce. Broken up. Neely still races for it. He's got Benedouce in the corner. He takes it up to the point himself, and the pass comes out the center for Church Vara. He back ends it up to Neely along the boards at center, and now into the zone. They send it behind the goal, winning the race to the puck there. Kenosian. Kenosian skates out. He centers it well. The shot comes in. Good save from Carlin. The shot came from Neely in the slot. And now... Here's Ramondelli. Ramondelli's pass ahead is broken up. He tried to find goal sign, but he couldn't get it to him. And now Ramondelli gets to the puck first. Ramondelli with it. Passes up ahead for Calvaruso, but broken up by Kenosian. And now the other way, two on one. Here's Drexel. Here's Benedouce. He's got Neely. The pass is for him, but it goes through everybody. And Neely's taken down in the slot as Lehigh will head to the box. And it's Goldstein who took down Neely to take away that scoring opportunity. It was a tough pass for him to handle, but Goldstein made no chances there. Well, I didn't get a chance to say it before the period. They started so quickly. But it's all about being the bigger man in this period. Uh, we've seen retaliation after retaliation. And so far, we've seen Lehigh go to the box uh, a couple times now and, and misconducts all over the place. They need to, they need to step it up a bit. Centering pass for Neely. He was tied up well by the Lehigh man, Levine, on the near circle after they won the draw in the zone. 15-20 left to go in regulation. 
Lehigh trying to erase a two-goal deficit, but they'll have to do so shorthanded right now as Drexel's on the power play. Here's Ryan Williams, who scored three tonight. Carroll's got the other one, the insurance goal. They get it into the zone. Carroll, the man with the puck, he sends it into the far corner. Here's Hagen. Hagen back out to Churchvara and back to Hagen. And now cross-ice pass for Ryan Williams. Good handling there to get it on his backhand. Back across ice for Hagen. Now they're content looking to kill time. Here's Hagen. Hagen takes the shot. It's in the slot. It's loose for a second, but Carlin directs it wide. And now back out to the point for Churchvara. Churchvara with a slap pass out in front. Broken up well by Levine. Back out to Churchvara. Still in the zone. Here's Hagen. For Carroll with it. And now Churchvara back to Carroll, who tapped for the puck. And he now he just wraps it around in the near side corner. Here's Cam Neely. 14.25 left in the period. 4-2 Drexel. 44 seconds left on the power play. To the point. Churchvara. He takes the shot. It's deflected in front. And then to drag behind the goal. Hagen tried to get it out in front. Carroll couldn't do much with it. The loose puck is jumped on by Neely. who shoots. Save made by Carlin. And then the rebound by Hagen. Here's Ryan Williams. Williams passes through the slot. Save made by Carlin on Neely's shot from a sharp angle. And now a good move shot. Save again by Carlin. Here's Ryan Williams. 13 seconds left in the power play. Here's Williams. He passes to Carroll behind the goal to Williams from the circle. Goes over the bar. And then the penalty is over. Church Vara races back to get it. They spent the entirety of that power play inside Lehigh zone with a number of shots and they peppered Carlin who was not giving up anything. 13-25 left to go in the third period. Lehigh needs two goals to tie this game in Philadelphia. Up ahead, here's Villa. Villa shoots right into Carlin's breadbasket and he covers up for the faceoff. The Lehigh goals again came from Ramondelli and McGee, both in the first period. Drexel was scoring, was able to score one from Ryan Williams in the first period. He got two in the second period. We entered this 3-2. And then Carroll's goal, shorthanded, has made it 4-2 in the third period. Face off to Carlin's left. One by Lehigh. They get it behind the goal. Homan up ice. And Warren and McGee. They wrap it around. Gravenstein's able to stop it there. Gets it to McGee on the near side half boards. There are two dragons there fighting McGee for it. They get it out to center. And then right in front of the Drexel bench, they still fight for it at center. And then McGee comes up with it. He shoots. Save by Gravenstein with 12.44 left in the third period. Still 4-2 Drexel here on their home ice at Penn's campus. Kyle Zoldi is the head coach of Drexel, and he played himself here uh, not too long ago. This is his third season at the helm, and uh, he's been able to take his team to the conference championship game a couple of times. Um, was able to get there himself as a player. This is the faceoff is won by Lehigh inside the Drexel zone. Carson Newton gets it up ice. It's a long pass ahead. And winning the race to the puck, Drexel, they're able to send it out in front. It's loose for a second, but the play's waved off. As we have a, looks like a penalty coming up. Uh, the goal is off. It's moorings, actually, as the referee had his hand up. Not for a penalty, but just for a stoppage. And they're saying he kicked it off his moorings. And we've seen this before. Maybe there's a little bit to this theory that you have. <laughs> I called it out early on. So, face off one by Drexel inside the Lehigh zone. We've seen him play probably more than any other neutral, and uh, that's something that we've noticed about Carlin. He is not as uh, surreptitious as he'd like to be. Face off to the right, and then the shot comes into the right, and Gravenstein just watches it go. Another shot comes in, and Gravenstein covers up with his stick and his glove with 12.08 left to go in regulation. You know, I, I joke about Carlin taking the <laughs> taking the goal off his moorings, but I, I think he just plays really close to the post, and you know that's just that's just what happens if if you do that. So uh, it, it's obviously just a joke, although it does happen a bit too much, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> no. Or <All right>, maybe <laughs> face off one by Lehigh inside the Drexel zone. 
They get it into the near side corner where Drexel has control of it, and they send it all the way down. This could be icing, and it will be because Warren wins the race to the puck. Faceoff will come again inside the Drexel zone with 11.54 on the clock here at Penn. Drexel with a two-goal lead. Thanks to Ryan Williams. Go ahead. Goalie's got a hat trick tonight. And Chris Carroll also has the insurance goal for Drexel. Lehigh hasn't scored despite five on threes that they've had in the second period and also here at the beginning of the third period. They haven't scored since the first with about two minutes to go. Inside the Lehigh zone now after Drexel wins the draw in their own zone. They get it here near side corner. And now with a little bit of time and space, here's Cam Neely. Neely's not able to stop one of the Mountain Hawks from getting it high off the glass. And they send it all the way down. Here's Chris Remondelli. Remondelli with Church Vara on him. He makes a great move on Church Vara. But another play is made there by a defenseman, Shagan, trying to get back in time. And now McGee. McGee looking for a centering pass. Shagan goes down to the ice to block it. And Drexel lifts it up, but not out of the zone. Here's Brooks. Brooks passes to McGee. McGee with a wide open net. And a great save made by Gravenstein to deny him a shot. It looked like McGee should have shot that earlier, but he tried to make a move instead on Gravenstein, and he wasn't able to get it past him with 11.03 left in regulation. Well, you're right. He had an open net there. I don't know why he didn't take that, but uh, he thought I guess he thought he, he could wrap it around, and then once he saw um, a couple of Drexel players on the other side, he decided not to. So should have taken it first, but you know, what are you going to do? And he gave Gravenstein time to get back from the left side of his net to the right, and now we'll have a face-off to Gravenstein's left on the near side circle. Trexel wins the draw, and they're able to get it into the near side corner, but only momentarily. Now they come out of the zone with it, chipping it in as Schickling. And then here's Rodriguez in the corner. Steven Villa is not able to keep it in the zone. Racing up center ice is Levine. Levine, stick checked away from him, and back out to the Mountain Hawks at center. And a good pass. He found his man there, Lochran, but it went under his stick at center. And so after they tag up on the delayed offside, here's Homan. Homan passes to Lochran. Lochran taps it for Friedman. And a high stick played there, but Friedman is touching it first. Drexel lifts it out of the zone. Here's Levine. Long pass ahead for Friedman. Friedman gets taken down from behind and Schickling with both referees pointing to the sky. Schickling went after Friedman unnecessarily there from behind. He was able to put pressure on him, but he skated right through him, and Schickling will head to the box. And this is an opportunity for Lehigh that Drexel probably shouldn't have given them. Well, the Drexel fans aren't happy with that, but it is the right call. He had it stuck in his skates, and the Drexel player going after it, but not much you can do when it's in your skates and you try to go after it. You just you, know, you took out the skates, unfortunately, you instead of getting the puck. The puck. You have the puck there, and Schickling hits him from behind. And it, under no circumstances can you hit somebody from behind like that, even though he did have the puck. Face-off won by Lehigh. Calvaruso with it over to the far side, McGee. And then behind the goal, Calvaruso with a shot, and McGee is stopped by Gravenstein with 9.52 left in the third period. He made that glove save look flashy. 1.45 left in this penalty. Lehigh unable to score in their previous power plays earlier tonight, especially the five on threes. Here, face off one by Lehigh. They get it out to the point, Calvaruso. Now near side, Brooks. Brooks with a wrister, goes through the slot, back hitter. Gravenstein slides across to make the save. 9.40 to play, and Drexel still with a two-goal lead. Well, we've seen so far, uh, especially in this third period, but towards the end of the second period, too, Ramondelli getting neutralized uh, by some of the some of the Drexel defensemen, and that's really been the key to, to Drexel's success so far. Ramondelli wins the draw. Was skating it in on goal, but not too much time and space afforded him in the slot. And so Drexel sends it all the way down the ice. Carlin has to play it in front of his goal. And Brooks now will set up behind Carlin with 1.14 to play in the power play. Here's Calvaruso on the right side. He skates in with Shagan shadowing him. He stops behind the goal. He's taken down. 
and now Yace. Yace had Brooks, gets it to him, and now Yace with it back. Yace skating, and he finds in the corner. Ramondelli shoved up against the boards, and now Yace with it, centers it. He's got Brooks. Brooks with a shot. It goes high and wide to the left side, and now Calvaruso with it at the point. Calvaruso sidesteps one man, gets it to Brooks, who shoots, and a great block, fearless block from Shagan. 8.40 to play in this regulation with 30 seconds left in the power play, and Carlin is upset with himself because after that clearance by Shagan, he lifted it up and out of play inside the Lehigh bench. And so the faceoff will come down inside the Lehigh zone, even though they are on the power play. You say Carlin's upset with himself, but Brooks should be upset with himself taking a shot while the defender's right in front of him. There's really only one result there, and it's going to get blocked, and possibly a breakaway the other way. So uh, not a smart decision by Brooks. The last time we were here, we saw Bill Swall of Westchester do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the ice when one of the defenders went down. I think it was actually Ryan Williams, who was one of these Drexel players. And instead of recognizing that and sidestepping him, uh, because once you go down on your knee to block the shot, you really lost no ability. And so we could have easily have seen Brooks do that on the other side of the ice here, but he didn't. instead he, he tried to power it through Shagan, and uh, Shagan proved that he's not a, uh, an open window there. He's a door. Yeah, it's, it seems that at a certain point in their, in their swing or in their shot, they they seem to already have made up their mind that they're going to shoot. And unfortunately, there, it's it's the absolute wrong decision. Face-off won by Drexel inside the Lehigh zone after Carlin sent the puck into his bench. Uh, 17 seconds left. We have a, a penalty coming up. It is on Carlin. It's actually because of the delay of game. So there's a four-on-four -four action going on right now. Face-off will come here outside or inside the zone because it was deflected by one of the Lehigh players. And uh, Lehigh, again, spurning another opportunity to tie this game with a power play by sending another man of, the, of theirs to the bench. Obviously, it's not Carlin serving the penalty. He's actually still on the ice. Face-off won by Drexel. Here's Ryan Williams with four seconds left in their penalty. Williams lifts it up, gets it into the corner. It's over Ramondelli's stick, and Neely gets it. And now Drexel will cycle. They're on the power play. Carroll now fighting Homan in the corner. 7.55 to play. Carroll skates in on goal. He backhands it out. And now in the slot, Ryan Williams. He passes ahead for Churchvara, who shoots. He hits the post. And then the centering pass comes in. Carlin will jump on it gratefully. Churchvara with a blistering wrist shot. And he hit the high post on the far side. And this game still... 4-2. Well, despite giving up four goals, Carlin has looked really, really good. He's had to go on on the penalty kill uh, a couple times now, but Drexel's power play is just ridiculously good. They give up uh, decent shots to get a lot better shots, and, and kudos to them for that. Church Vara with a shot. It's padded away by Carlin on the one-timer, and they poke at the rebound, and eventually it gets to the near side corner. Church Vara with it. He slings it again. And a nice save made by Carlin to direct it wide and behind the net. Here's Hagen. 48 seconds left on the Drexel power play. Churchvara now behind the goal. Skating in. Carlin makes the initial save. And again, he takes the net off its moorings as he goes out to play that puck. He jumps on it and freezes the puck. So the really, the goal coming off the crease didn't really matter as much. 7.15 to play with 40 seconds left on the Drexel power play because of the Carlin delay of game. 37 shots on goal by Drexel tonight. 29 so far for Lehigh. Face off one by Drexel inside the Lehigh zone. Five on four for Drexel as Warren skates up ice. Warren shoots. They need to get something going if they're going to tie this game. They need two goals. Yace fights for the puck there in the corner and Drexel comes up with it. Here's Meyer. Meyer skating up ice. And now Rodriguez who backhands it into the zone. But Ryan Benedus, who scored against Navy yesterday, passes to Rodriguez, who skates to the slot and is turned away. He circles aside. Warren defended him there. A good one-two pass into Rodriguez, and it came out. So Drexel will have to touch up. Lehigh is going to kill time. 
Lehigh now skating up with it. Calvaruso is able to lift it out of the zone past Church Vara and all the way down. Trexel thought it might have been icing, but the power play was still going on at that point. Now the power play is over. In on goal, McGee. He centers it for Chris Ramondelli. He wasn't able to get a shot off in the slot. And another shot comes in. Save made by Gravenstein. And he covers up with 6-10 left to go in regulation. Trexel still holding on to the 4-2 lead. Finally, we're back to 5-on-5. Five five. We haven't been able to play at full strength for a long time here in this game. Face off to Gravenstein's right. One by the Dragons. Churchvar plays it behind the boards. And now centering it in McGee. McGee tried to find Brooks on the backhanded behind the back pass, but it was broken up. And now up the side. Here's Shagan. Shagan centers it. It goes through the crease, and then Brooks comes up with the rebound. They can't clear it out, and Brooks as Carlin holds on to the bouncing puck as it was sent in from Church Vara at the point. 5.48 to play in the game. Well, in the beginning of the game, we saw Ramondelli on the first line, and then we saw McGee and Brooks on the second line. We're now seeing a lot of Ramondelli, Brooks, and McGee on the same line, uh, just trying to, to shake things up a bit. They need to shake it up a bit. Drexel wins the draw on the shot. Right off the draw. Goes wide to the left. Inside the near corner. And now Homan behind the goal. He skates up to the far corner. And then passes up ice. It goes through everyone. No icing. No, it is icing. As one of the Mountain Hawks there, Calvaruso, wasn't able to get a touch on it. It center ice. 5.29 to play in regulation. 4-2. Drexel leading over Lehigh. Face off one by Ryan Williams. And Drexel keeps it in the zone as it gets to the defenseman. Warren now has it in the far corner, and he's got time. He skates behind the goal. Warren skates up ice, gives it back into the near corner for Homan, and then up ice. Good passing here from Lehigh. Calvaruso, he's got Yaste on his left. Calvaruso looking to center it, gets it to Yaste in front. It was bouncing for him, and now picking it up is Goldstein. Here's Calvaruso behind the net. He's hit hard into the boards, and now... Goldstein, back to Calvaruso, centers it, the shot, blocked in front, the shot came from Levine, and now Levine in the corner, he's looking for a pass, gets it behind the goal, to Goldstein, Goldstein centers it, it's blocked, and then up in front, and they get it out of the zone, Carroll was the one with the block, here's Levine, Levine passes it up ice, it goes under the stick of Yeast, and that will be icing, we're playing this third period in spurts, 4.32 left to go in regulation. Drexel leads 4-2 here at the class of 1923 arena at the University of Pennsylvania. 2,500 people can fit here as the faceoff is won by Lehigh to the right of Carlin. They skate up with it. Here's Yeast. Yeast defended by Church Vara. Church Vara having an excellent game. Into the near side corner it comes. And then up ice. Cam Neely passes. It's deflected by Brooks. Back to Neely. Neely looking for the centering pass. He takes it himself. He scores! Cam Neely after Brooks blocked his initial pass. It went right back to him. And he thought about centering it. Lehigh thought for the world that he would. But instead he dragged it in himself. And he lifted it up high and roofed it into the far corner. 5-2 is the score. Drexel with a three-goal lead now with 4-10 left to go in regulation. And Drexel really has been the better team here. We've seen Lehigh had the early lead, and we thought they might, they might be able to play with that lead and hold on to it, but Drexel was able to wear them down thanks to a lot of penalties that Lehigh took as well. Yeah, we only saw it pretty even uh, in the second period a bit. But unfortunately for, for Lehigh, Drexel has just manhandled this game. It's saved by, by Carlin there. Yeah, I mean, Drexel has just manhandled the game. And, and, you know, it's tough for Lehigh when you only have three players that can really create out there. And especially when they're all on the same line toward the end of the game, you know, you have three other lines that, that aren't, aren't going to do anything, really, to be honest with you. Um, and that's why 
originally they they spread out the the the, uh, the, the three-headed monster, if you will, um, amongst the lines. Now, we've seen LASIK keep those goal scorers out there early uh, on a lot of the power plays that Lehigh had had to keep them out on the ice as long as possible. He took his time out earlier as well to give them rest so that they could keep playing. And uh, LASIK's just not able to to take advantage of when his players were out there when they had five on threes. Here's Joseph Ramondelli who passes across the blue line. It's intercepted by Rodriguez. And now skating in on goal, here's Schickling. Schickling is directed into the corner by Lochran. And then the two players go after the puck there into the corner. Lehigh comes up, the victors of that battle. They lift it up out into the center ice. Drexel chops it down. Up ahead. They were offside, and so they had to let it go for Lehigh to play in their own zone. Joseph Ramadelli sends it into the zone. Lehigh unable to get there first, and Drexel sends it all the way up ice for another icing call as Lehigh races it down. 2.44 left to go. Drexel leads by three. Well, you know, hindsight's 2020 when you talk about the, the rough play and the physical play uh, of this whole game, but Drexel has really ben benefited from it. You see, you see Lehigh players, especially the big three, uh, looking over their shoulder whenever they have the puck. Even some of the other the other players, they're just looking for a hit wherever they go. You see Warren a bit. You see uh, a couple other players just always looking around for the hit to come, and that's what Drexel has uh, put on this game. Five two was the score last night when Lehigh lost to Towson University. Five two is the score tonight as Drexel has the lead here at the Class of 23 Arena with 2.23 left in regulation. Face-off will go to the left of Carlin. McGee wins the draw and gets it back to his defenseman there behind the goal. Into the corner, here's Chris Ramondelli. He loses the puck. Slashing at it was Carson Newton, and eventually Lehigh pounces on the loose puck behind the goal. Chased down well by Ferreira. Ferreira now behind the goal. He passes out to the point here for Michalik. Sends it in on goal, but it's deflected there by Homan, and then they get it out of the zone. McGee overskates the puck, though. Chris Remondelli unable to get to it. Here's Ferreira. He shoots. He scores! Adam Ferreira with a goal, and Carlin left something to be desired there, but Ferreira was skating in all by himself in the slot. He had his pick of the goal, and he, even though Carlin was able to get something on it, and it wasn't the most deadly of shots, it got past him after the deflection. Drexel leads 6-2 with 1.54 left in the game. No, it, it wasn't. It was, it was a decent goal. Uh, Carlin should have stopped it. But it really came from a lack of communication in the neutral zone. Lehigh passing it, a saucer pass from the uh, from the right side, going for the far side, but the uh, Ramondelli in the middle taking the pass. He shouldn't have. Um, it would have been a perfect pass for the far left side, but uh, that's that's what happens when there's a lack of communication. And so 134 left in regulation here. A four-goal lead for Drexel, and it's really been what we've expected from the run of play, even though Lehigh had their moments in this game and really could have taken advantage of them. They were the ones they had scored on two of their six shots in the first period for a great percentage and really cashing in on their chances, but they haven't scored since then, and that's really been the story of this game as we enter the last minute of play in the third period. Trexel will take this four-goal lead and emerge from the weekend with an overtime victory and another victory here tonight. This time a little bit more lopsided. 50 seconds left to go as Calvarusia skates across center ice. He takes the shot. It's blocked aside by Gravenstein up along the boards. It stayed up on the boards between the glass and the uh, plastic underneath it for a while. 37 seconds left. Lehigh with the puck. They don't have the extra attacker on with a four-goal deficit. Into the far corner it goes. 30 seconds left. Now back to the point. They fire it in on Gravenstein. It never makes it to him as it hits Yeast out in front. He's still kind of limping from the shot. Yeast with it out in front. And now Calvaruso shoots. Club save Gravenstein. And the rebound loose and lifted up in the center. 
11 seconds left, and Lehigh just killing time here. They send it into the far corner. And Gravenstein will direct traffic behind his goal, and that will do it here between Drexel and Lehigh. The final score, 6-2, to two, Drexel over Lehigh here at the Class of 23 Arena. And we'll say goodnight. Brian Augsburger along here with me, Michael Augsburger, on the PTI Network. Thanks for joining us on Saturday night. It was hockey night and a great atmosphere here at the Class of 23 Arena as the team shake hands. Drexel with a weekend sweep of their two games, including Navy and Lehigh. Lehigh going 0-2 this weekend after their loss against Towson yesterday. The final score, Drexel 6, Lehigh 2. And this has been a presentation of PTI Network. Thanks for joining us, everyone.